Good evening, good morning, good day, ladies and gentlemen, depending uh, from where you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Gianluca Masi is speaking on the behalf of the Virtual Telescope Project. It is uh, such a big pleasure to be here uh, this morning, at least uh, this is my Italian morning, because I'm very pleased to share with you another beautiful event happening just now up there in the sky. This is a partial lunar eclipse, something very beautiful we are going to share together thanks to a number of uh, uh, collaborators of uh, very generous people around the planet who made possible once again for the Virtual Telescope Project to organize such a live feed. Uh, you know, uh, the lunar eclipse is uh, particularly visible, I mean this eclipse is particularly visible from uh, uh, the Americas and also from uh, the Far East, but not from Europe where I am. I am in Rome, Italy, and uh, right now here it is uh, a sunny day early in the morning, 8 a.m. in the morning, so the moon is not visible, so the eclipse is not visible here. So we could not share our own images and uh, as we have been doing for a number of years now, we partnered, we created, we uh, promoted such a cooperation involving a number of uh, great people, great observers around uh, our planet and they will be sharing with us their own images and I will have the, ble the pleasure and the honor to bring those images to you and uh, you will have the experience of uh, the eclipse. I just want to share you a quick image I have from one of uh, our uh, friends and this image I apologize my friends as uh, I had a uh, uh, little issue with my audio now things should be working regularly and so I want to show you again the images with proper comment as uh, I had some I already received some images from uh, uh, the imaging team from uh, our friends around the planet and I really want to share those images with you because they are very, very beautiful. Of course, those images are showing the moon before the eclipse started. This image is coming from Bill Longo in Canada, a long time collaborator of the Virtual Telescope Project, great astrophotographer. And as you can see, you have the beautiful full moon. And needless to, needless to say, the full moon is a mandatory condition to have a lunar eclipse. And still, while uh, the eclipse uh, was not uh, showing because it, this image was was taken earlier than uh, the eclipse uh, started i i believe you can really enjoy the beauty of our satellite and uh, after the bill image i want to share with you now another amazing shot i received from uh, another long time friend great astrophotographer and uh, collaborator of the virtual telescope project James McHugh from uh, New Mexico and uh, here it is is an uh, amazing uh, image and hope those images will bring to you the beauty and uh, I mean the feeling of the experience very beautiful image
I must say that James has been uh, making uh, many images with this uh, amazing combination of uh, uh, cosmic elements and our own terrestrial panorama images. And while you are still observing this, I have another image I want to share with you, my friends, just uh, taking uh, the time uh, to adjust and share with you in proper format, taken by Sonali Desmuk, Desmuk in Nebraska. And uh, I want to show these images to you as well. It is quite, uh, I mean, an art process because I am receiving images from our collaborators and I'm doing uh, my best to bring those images to you, hopefully and almost in real time, just to preserve the idea you are observing the eclipse live. Of course, as I told you, these images are not showing the eclipse, going to do that in a few minutes, but still I wanted to share with you those sides of the moon just before the eclipse started. And here it is, this other image. It takes some time for me to receive the images, to adjust them, to properly put those images in the frame and share with you with proper credit. So I apologize if sometimes you will need to wait for an handful of seconds, but I hope this will be a rewarding experience. But before we go farther into the eclipse, I really want to thank all the people who made possible for us to share with you this experience. They are a number of people, I told you, from uh, different places of the world. And I want to thank Dean and William Hooper from Melbourne, Australia, John Stevenson from Queensland, Australia, James McHugh, New Mexico, USA, Geoffrey Wyatt, Sydney, Australia, Julie Strayer, Albany Creek, Queensland, Australia, Joachim Fabrica Poleri, Pan Panama, Gary Warney, Florida, USA, Chris Corvin, New Brunswick, Canada, Jim Thompson, Ottawa, Canada, Adrian Bradley, Pontox, Lighthouse, USA, Bill Longo, Ontario, Canada, Karim Jaffer, Montreal Center, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, Chris Stockdale, Victoria, Australia, Susie Webb, Brisbane, Australia, and Sonali Deshmuk, Nebraska, USA. It is thanks to the generosity people I just mentioned that we will be able to see this eclipse. Also, please understand that uh, I know our friends have uh, some uh, critical uh, conditions, some of them at least, because, uh, because of the, um, the weather at their location could be cloudy. This is, as I said, mother nature at work. And I really apologize if uh, sometimes I, it will take a few minutes to put new images together. But please understand what is happening here. I am in Rome talking to you, having the privilege to speak and talk to you. But uh, the great job, the preacher's job here is done by, uh, by our friends around the planet from Canada, from uh, the Americas, from Australia, because they are just seeing the eclipse, 
something I cannot do from Italy because this eclipse is not visible from Europe, basically, from Italy at least. They are sending us images as fast as they can, as soon as the images are grabbed from, uh, with their instruments and I'm receiving these images and I'm handling them to put them on the web and share with you. As you can see, this is a quite frenetic activity, but still, as in the past, I hope this will uh, bring to you the feeling, the experience and the beauty of uh, such an uh, incredible and amazing, amazing event. I have here a new image and uh, going to share right away, just, just in, on time to share you, to, share, to show you some uh, hint of the eclipse. <clears throat> And here it is, just a few seconds, my friends. And I think you should, you should see the image now. And you can really see that uh, the upper border of the moon is darker because, of course, the eclipse has now started. I told you, this is a partial eclipse, not a total one. I mean, the moon will never be completely inside the shadow of the Earth, but it is almost total because um, the Moon will be basically inside 97% 97% of the Moon will be under the Earth's shadow. And there is another special feature of this eclipse. You know, sometimes you have heard about uh, the idea of the super Moon, just meaning a full Moon happening when the moon is a bit closer than usual because this is normal because the orbit of our moon is an ellipse and sometimes the moon is closer sometimes it is a bit farther away and uh, right now the moon is uh, at the, the la it is not far from the largest distance possible from us some uh, 10% more than the average distance so in short the moon is a bit uh, smaller in size as seen from the earth and this will help this uh, uh, distance uh, a bit larger than the average will make the moon spending more time inside the, the structure of the Earth's shadow and this will provide us with the, the longest partial lunar eclipse in a few centuries. Actually uh, from uh, the 15th century to the 77th century this will be the longest partial lunar eclipse, so something truly record setting, I mean. And that said, I still want to share with you a few more images. I am just receiving a number of high quality pictures and uh, let me go, let me share with you what is happening. The new image is coming in uh, a few seconds and this is coming from uh, Ron Del Vaux, Arizona. Here it is, just uh, saving and uh, sharing through our live feed system. And by now you should have this new image, I hope. Yes? It is there. And in the meantime, while we are enjoying Ron Del Vaux, Arizona, USA image, I have a new one from uh, James McHugh. I told you a number of friends in Australia and also in the USA and in Canada are now facing clouds. But the hope here is that the, the clouds coverage will break at some point and they are ready to image. You, you can understand how hard is uh, sometimes the astronomical job here. But uh, this is modern nature and we fully respect this thing. And uh, while uh, we really hope our friends everywhere will have uh, clear weather, we are uh, still lucky to have uh, some truly beautiful images coming. This is the, I mean, uh, uh, one of the preachers 
uh, benefits of such a large corporation is uh, exactly this if uh, someone is under the clouds hopefully someone else is under a clear sky and uh, please friends enjoy this other uh, beautiful image coming uh, this time from uh, James McHugh New Mexico where you can clearly see evidence of uh, the earth shadow starting uh, kissing uh, the lunar surface and I also want to show you why we have eclipses it is quite easy you know well we live in a special place we call this special place solar system how are uh, uh, main actor here is the Sun and our planet the Earth is orbiting around the Sun but we are not alone because around the Earth there is a good long time friend our natural satellite we call the Moon as you can see the Earth has its own orbit around the Sun and of course the Moon has its own orbit around the Earth the great thing the important thing here is that the, the plane just hosting the earth orbit the ecliptic plane is uh, different from the plane where the lunar orbit is there are a few degrees a bit more than five degrees of inclination this is very important because as you can see in this very easy in this very uh, clear graphic when you have the new moon or the full moon and the new moon is uh, of course mandatory for solar eclipses the full moon is uh, obvi obviously needed for solar for moon eclipses you can see that it is not obvious that the, the the sun the moon new moon the earth or the full moon are on the same line and they have to be on the same line to offer us an eclipse this is because of course there is this inclination but when the new moon or the full moon happen when they are on the on the ecliptic plane you have an eclipse and this is happening not so often otherwise you would have a lunar eclipse every full moon if the full moon would be every month on the ecliptic plane this is why you have to wait you have to wait that things will work for you to have the full moon to limit us to the, so to the lunar eclipses the full moon on the ecliptic plane and it means that the moon will be on uh, the node of course of the lunar orbit of, that is where the lunar orbit and the earth orbit are just crossing and uh, i believe that this uh, graphic is telling you th these things very very easily and uh, in a very clear very clear way at some point i believe everyone will want to see the typical beautiful beautiful colors of the lunar eclipse that is uh, the red the bronze color as you know and uh, it will uh, show I'm pretty sure because as I told you this partial eclipse is uh, going to be almost total and uh, I will tell you more later but meantime I still want to share with you great images coming from our friends in the Americas here it is another great beautiful image by Ron uh, Delvo Arizona a long time friend and uh, great astrophotographer and collaborator of the virtual telescope project here it is is a new image and uh, I'm very happy and pleased to share this uh, beautiful image with you again just creating the image and put the image on its way to you here it is and clearly as you can see you have uh, strong evidence now that uh, the eclipse is uh, of course ongoing I believe that uh, looking uh, such a solar eclipse as a lunar eclipse sorry is always a wonderful experience no matter the number of eclipses you enjoyed my friends every time it's a new experience like enjoying sunsets for example no matter the number of sunsets you saw earlier the new sunset is always always breathtaking 
And now a new image from a Sonali Deshmukh. I'm going to share. Here it is. Just adjust, adjusting credits as as needed. <clears throat> and here it is, my friends. And also want to show you a few de few details, just uh, summarizing uh, summarizing uh, the eclipse we are enjoying all together because at some point this eclipse will reach its climax, its maximum. And uh, I really want to share with you this basic data as well. Here it is. And uh, you can see that uh, the greatest eclipse <coughs> will be in uh, less than uh, Two hours by now and as you can see this uh, easy graphic is telling us that our satellite is apparently traveling across the structure of the earth penumbra and umbra and uh, of course the most beautiful the peak i mean uh, of the event the most beautiful moment is when the satellite the moon is uh, just uh, at its closest to the center of the Earth's shadow. As I told you, this eclipse is not total, so we will still have, this time, a small portion of the lunar disk staying outside from the Earth's umbra, but 97% of its disk will be covered by that feature. So we will appreciate the beautiful color, the bronze red color of uh, the the typical color, I would say, of uh, a, a, a deep lunar eclipse, total eclipses, but also also uh, deep partial eclipses like this one. And as I told you, this is a, a record-setting partial lunar eclipse as for its duration. Let me check if we have new images coming, as every time here I'm excited to check my mailbox and see the masterpieces that our collaborators are sending us. And this is the case because I have a new image from Arizona, from Ron Delvaux. Here it is, setting the proper credits. I really want to pay the right honor to our astro imagers doing uh, the most precious part of the work of the job here, my friends. And here it is, the new image from Arizona. And you can clearly see how the eclipse is evolving. Look, of course, we are already in the shadow, as I told you, the shadow of the moon. Actually, the shadow, the, the I mean, the, the, the moon entered the Earth's shadow more or less 10 minutes ago. And uh, by now, from now, you will see this uh, darkening, evolving, with our satellite getting darker and darker. But uh, it will never be black. I mean, you know, if you have, uh, if you have seen a uh, lunar eclipse, even a total lunar eclipse by yourself, you will remember, and we have mentioned this by the way, that the lunar disk will stay red. You, you will see the lunar disk, no matter the eclipse, while in principle during a total lunar eclipse, the moon is not getting any light from the sun, but you are still seeing the lunar disk in your sky. This is because the solar uh, light is filtering through the uh, crossing the atmosphere across the earth atmosphere and uh, only the red color is uh, reaching the lunar distance this is why you see that color in uh, during the lunar total lunar eclipses because the red color is the only one reaching the moon while its uh, disk is completely inside or almost 
completely inside the Earth shadow. This is something just amazing if you think about this. At least I find this uh, breathtaking. Here we are with new images. Here it is uh, another grid shot from uh, James McHugh in New Mexico. And needless to say, I'm going to share all this with you right away, my friends. Just asking the system to save the image with the proper credits. Here it is. I love the idea that uh, we are enjoying uh, images from different uh, people and different places because this is also, I mean, just uh, underlining the importance and the beauty of uh, cooperation. We have many eyes in this case, okay? And we are just breathing uh, uh, the different experience of uh, these uh, friends working in very different places and uh, i love technology in this case because while we are doing this i am in rome james here is in new mexico ron is in arizona bill is in canada just to mention those and uh, sonali is in nebraska just to mention those who sent images while i still thank everyone uh, involved even if they are under the clouds now but just to tell how technology is making possible for us to create a network and uh, sharing with you images coming from very different places, something uh, impossible to do just uh, not one century ago, but 20 years ago, even less. And I really hope that this is uh, something uh, rewarding uh, because I appreciate you are spending some of your time with us and uh, hopefully, as I told, this will uh, bring to you the joy, the beauty and the, the emotion of such an eclipse. And here it is, my friends, another great image by, from Canada, from our friends Bill Longo, just setting the credits. Here it is, how beautiful it is even this image and uh, I am never tired, never tired to appreciate these uh, masterpieces, my friends. And I really hope this will be the same for you as well. I have also another image uh, from Canada, from Karif uh, Jaffer, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada Montreal Centre, and uh, I'm going uh, to share this image with you as well. Here it is. I understand that uh, many friends are under uh, clouds, and I particularly appreciate that uh, no matter those clouds, they are still there, they are still uh, hoping with their and our finger crossed, and they are ready to capture even a glimpse through the clouds. And here it is an image from uh, Karim Jaffer, Canada, my friends. Meantime, I'm still getting uh, beautiful images, as I told you. New one from uh, Ron Delvaux. I'm amazed every time by the, the generosity of uh, our friends working uh, hard to make those images available in real time and uh, sharing with the world. They could easily just enjoy the eclipse alone without rushing for uh, capturing and sharing images with us, but they, they really want to offer this opportunity to everyone. This is why I love the idea of this uh, cooperation, my friends. 
a new image is coming from uh, Ron, Arizona, USA. Here it is. <coughs> While uh, the eclipse is uh, running uh, slowly, it is still running and uh, image after image you can really see it evolving. And I find all this amazing. While we are waiting for a new image to come, I also want to show why we have uh, the red color when uh, the moon is, uh, at, is uh, at its closest of the hair shadow. I already explained in this because uh, the eclipse, the lunar eclipse, is basically saying us that the earth shadow is uh, covering the moon from the sun light. In principle, when the moon is completely enter entirely inside the earth shadow, you shouldn't see the moon because no light is reaching our satellite at that point. But you can see the lunar disk red. Why? Because there is a special feature around our uh, earth our atmosphere and as you can see here during uh, the central the centrality the core in the earth of the eclipse i would say the totality in principle if you were on the moon and uh, if you were looking to the earth to the sun but the earth is just covering the sun you will see that uh, red ring around the earth that is our atmosphere and that color is of course just uh, the color you see on the moon. Only red, as made clear here, is reaching the moon when the moon is entirely inside the air shadow. This is why you see that color when the moon is uh, enough inside the earth shadow. I really love this uh, simple mechanism making the lunar eclipses so magic, my friends. Let's check if we have new images. Here it is, uh, another amazing, beautiful capture from Bilongo, Canada. Something I'm really going to share with you right away. And uh, this way, I think that even if you are living uh, far from uh, the opportunity to enjoy this yourself, you can still appreciate the eclipse. Needless to say, if you are in the right place from where the eclipse is visible now and your sky is clear, please go out and enjoy the eclipse in person, because this is something you can uh, you are really, you have to do absolutely, my friends. How beautiful every time. I apologize if I repeat, but uh, I really love the eclipse, the aesthetic of the eclipse every, every, every time. I find all this amazing. Another beautiful image coming from Nebraska, from uh, Sonali Deshmukh. And I'm very happy to work on it, to make it available right away. Here it is. Just saving the image to make it ready for our stream. And here it is. How beautiful. I, I appreciate also uh, seeing different images, I mean, coming from different observers because there are difference, uh, uh, differences in the instruments used in the orientation of the camera. And uh, this is telling us that many people are working to put all these things together and bring to you 
the experience, uh, the live experience of this eclipse reaching you in the comfort of your home. And uh, from Europe, this eclipse uh, is not visible because uh, we are just uh, in our in broad daylight now, and the moon, of course, is uh, below our horizon. And this is uh, particularly true for me here in Rome, Italy. But uh, we are lucky to have uh, generous people like this uh, Eclipse team making it possible once again to share with you this uh, beautiful show. I appreciate that uh, every time uh, an such an important astronomical event approaches, uh, sometimes, I, sometimes it is me, of course, uh, just calling for observers to cooperate and to offer something unique to the world. But very often they are the observers, the astrophotographers asking me if we are going to do even this time something we did uh, earlier this year or uh, in the past year. So we are now like a family just thinking alike and just feeling uh, uh, important at the same uh, time to bring all this to other people uh, less uh, uh, fortunate because I, I, I understand that if you are in the right place like in the Americas now the best you can you can do if the sky is clear is just to shut down your computer go out and enjoy the eclipse yourself this is something I will do for sure of course I, I in my case I will be uh, I will be sharing the live images from Rome as well but uh, if you live like me in Italy, or if your sky is uh, cloudy, this uh, uh, technological live opportunity is uh, still precious. I hope, I believe, to bring to you the eclipse. Another image from uh, Karim Jaffer, just coming. And uh, I'm just going to put the image online and here we are I really want to check also a new another thing if you don't mind just to make sure that we have everything up and running. Okay. Okay, my friends. always excited to check for new images as I told you <clears throat> and uh, time to check for new images still waiting And again, I want to thank, while we wait, all the people who offered their uh, kind availability to share images, and they are Dean and William Hooper, John Stevenson, James McHugh, Geoffrey Wyatt, Julie Strayer, Joachim Fabrica Polleri, Gary Warney, Chris Carvin, Jim Thompson, Adrian Bradley, Bill Longo, Karim Jaffer, Christoph Dale, Susie Webb, and Sonali Deshmukh, and uh, of course, Ron Delbo. Our, our friends are really making possible for us to see something special. I'm just uh, waiting. Uh, 
for new images. As soon as they arrive, of course, I will be sharing. I continue. I, uh, here we are with a new image from James McHugh from uh, New Mexico. Going to here. Yeah, wow, this is truly an amazing image. Every image is beautiful. <laughs> you know, this is the magic of uh, the eclipse. This is the magic of uh, Mother Nature. Astronomy is this case, but every natural uh, theme is amazing to me. And here it is, this new image from uh, New Mexico, from uh, James McHugh. Wow. How beautiful it is. I'm truly amazed to share this with you and I'm looking forward to see new image, new image coming because every image is bringing new sensations, new feelings to us. <clears throat> and uh, from uh, New Mexico, USA, we are leaving for uh, Canada again while I prepare and share another grid capture from uh, Bin Longo, Ontario, Canada and uh, here it is uh, the new image And of course, needless to say, now you have uh, very, very strong evidence of the air shadow just uh, slowly moving on the lunar surface. <clears throat> How beautiful for me to have the privilege. I, I'm very grateful to our astro imagers for their job because keep in mind they are doing the hardest part of the work because they are out there in the field in the middle of day or night facing uh, the night nice sky, a beautiful experience but perhaps in the cold if they are working at winter like in the north hemisphere, I mean at least in the fall not very warm temperatures at night, at least in Italy, and they are capturing beautiful images. They are sending and sharing with me those images uh, right away, and uh, the fastest I can, I'm just making those images available to you. And uh, at least I hope that I I am able to honor the precious work they are doing. Again, while we wait, I want to remind you about uh, the details of this eclipse. From here you can easily see from where the eclipse is not visible and uh, you can see that most of Africa and uh, basically Europe have uh, no chances or had uh, very poor chances to see the very early phases, I mean the most subtle phases of uh, the eclipse itself, while the Americas especially the north portion of, of the Americas are blessed with the basically perfect conditions. So our friends in Canada, our friends uh, in Arizona and uh, New Mexico are in the nominal region from where the eclipse is entirely visible from the very beginning from to the very end. And uh, it is also, this uh, plot is also making clear about the dynamic of the eclipse. Of course, the, the moon is uh, slowly moving across the air penumbra and uh, umbra structure. And uh, we are already, already in the, inside the umbra. And uh, as you can also see from uh, 
the details eclipse contacts you see u1 7 uh, 18 universal time that is uh, 30 minutes ago so 30 minutes ago the lunar disk started to move inside the earth shadow but uh, the lunar disk will be never completely inside the earth shadow otherwise we were calling the eclipse total but it will be almost there because 97 percent of the lunar disk at the peak at the peak of the eclipse will be inside the earth shadow and from uh, this point of view i mean this is a borderline eclipse but you will recognize that we will have at some point at the climax of the event we, we will have a border of the moon clearly brighter than the opposite border which will be closer and well inside the earth shadow let's see if we have new surprises and we had But it is not an image, but uh, I really appreciate that our friend Bill Longo shared with us the uh, local uh, weather condition. Uh, Bill, in, par in particular, is working uh, with a temperature of uh, wine 0.8 Celsius degrees and with a humidity of 78% uh, and uh, with uh, the apparent temperature of 0 0.4, minus 0 0.4 Celsius degrees. So, this is really bringing, thank you Bill for sharing this, because this is also bringing some uh, realism into the experience, because uh, it is telling us uh, something about the local conditions where, or the place from where Bill is taking his images. And uh, I still want to show you the latest image uh, we have while waiting for more here it is from bill by the way <clears throat> and uh, i remember some past events where uh, the weather has been an issue a worldwide issue no matter the the large area involved with the observers scattered uh, basically over uh, an entire continent i remember past uh, events where the weather was uh, really an issue and uh, this is why I, I i feel lucky every time i receive an image because uh, while here we have uh, several observers very far away uh, each other it is not obvious that uh, some of them, even one of them, will have uh, clear weather. While I am speaking, 70% uh, of our uh, friends still ready to image are not imaging because they have clouds. They have no good weather. And uh, while I share with you this uh, <laughs> these uh, secrets of uh, the astronom astronomical life i just received another amazing image from uh, bill canada and uh, i'm so happy that i can share with you right away this amazing shot just adjusting as usual and uh, here it is my friends this new beautiful capture from Billongo, Ontario, Canada. How beautiful, how precious, every fragment, every capture, every moment. I, I the last time I could personally see a lunar eclipse it was the total eclipse uh, july 2018 it was uh, as i told you total and it was the lo longest total eclipse of the century and uh, i was lucky because the sky in rome was clear and of course i i shared the live feed with uh, 
with everyone through the virtual telescope project and uh, but since then uh, i had no further opportunities because uh, uh, those eclipses visible from italy went uh, lost of course because of the weather and uh, uh, sometimes i'm amazed because uh, people uh, perhaps uh, people not involved in astronomy uh, perhaps are missing how important the weather conditions are to observe the sky it could perhaps you feel you, you, you see you, you think it is obvious that uh, clouds will simply uh, cover the sky when cloudy uh, sky is cloudy astronomers are uh, mainly sleeping you know but sometimes i remember people in anger because they said oh you promised us to see this and now you are not showing the eclipse okay but it is cloudy ah but it is... shame on you oh I'm, I'm sorry but i'm not the the owner of the weather otherwise i should have a temple with my name above it if i had that power so it is funny that sometimes people discover that the weather can be an issue of saving the sky when uh, some expectations are broken still waiting for new images to come and still uh, very 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 grateful to our friends just providing uh, their uh, images offering uh, their time and their invaluable uh, work and uh, experience and know-how to us i really hope that uh, you keep an eye on the sky I mean not only during the eclipse i hope that uh, the opportunity of the eclipse will just shake you and uh, will uh, just uh, promote in you an interest for the night sky in general new images are coming and uh, i have a special one coming from uh, adrian bradley joining uh, with this image uh, the live feed and i'm going to share this image with you as uh, this image is not showing uh, actually showing the eclipse but uh, you will see because uh, the reason why i really want to share the image with you and I thank Adrian for sharing with us because uh, as we really love here the virtual telescope this image is telling us about the experience of the observer here it is the image <clears throat> because uh, it is showing uh, the moon with clouds around some beautiful colors corona and uh, the natural uh, elements all around <clears throat> just going to share with you sorry my mistake here And now I think the image should reach you. Ah, 
how beautiful it is to enjoy this as well because this image is bringing us i mean a wider view and also it is making possible for us to image to be there from where our friend adrian in this case is observing and sharing his work with us meantime a new image arrived from canada bill longo captured this new view something going to show in a couple of seconds here it is we are approaching uh, the first hour and i really thank uh, the many many people connected and uh, uh, just uh, i want to thank everyone uh, in particular for uh, the time you are spending with us because offering your time to join our live feed is something we really really appreciate another precious capture coming from uh, sonali deshmuk nebraska usa another very beautiful shot thank you very much to you Sonali and uh, just adjusting the image to put the image online <clears throat> here we are And this is a new capture from Nebraska by our friend Sonali. Every time we have uh, some uh, live feed involving people uh, around the planet, I, I, the, the thing I'm doing more often is just checking emails if we have some images. Now my uh, friend Karim Jaffer from uh, uh, Royal Astronomical Society Canada Montreal Center um, Karen Jaffer said is uh, sending a new image and saying uh, it has been uh, grabbed while fighting uh, with the clouds I can understand because uh, many many times when you have been waiting uh, for something uh, so long and uh, clouds are always ready to jump into the sky and uh, here it is uh, Karim latest image <clears throat> how beautiful the nice sky is I mean I, I hope really that uh, I appreciate where uh, something uh, amazing like uh, an eclipse is going to happen. I mean, I, I'm always happy because uh, these uh, special events are often able to, uh, to spark some light and uh, to spark an interest about the night sky. And sometimes it is a lunar eclipse, a solar eclipse, a bright comet crossing the night sky. Just uh, the breaking event uh, changing your life i mean just to say that from that event you will start enjoying the beauty of the cosmos and uh, i always hope that uh, our events will do something similar despite the huge technology we see all around us i still want to remind you that your own eyes are the most precious tools you really need to experience the joy of the night nice sky the only problem here it is the light pollution if you live in a big city of course you have to face clouds but mainly you have to face lights and lights are much worse than clouds 
and uh, while I just mentioned this, I, 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 I remember when I was uh, younger, uh, living in a rural area, I could really see a beautiful sky, something I don't have here in Rome, but the very sad thing is that if I go there, where I grew up, where I had that very pretty beautiful sky, I no longer see that beautiful sky sky the nice sky is dying and unfortunately this is happening with very very uh, poor interest and this is a huge problem and uh, we should preserve the nice sky and we can do this the nice sky and the city lights can live together it is just a matter of uh, uh, intelligence <laughs> if we really are if we, we really have our evolved uh, animals we should prove this also using technology, light in this case, without destroying the beauty of the nature. And meantime, <clears throat> a new image from Bill Longo, something I'm going to share with you right away. <clears throat> Adjusting the image and credits. And now pushing the image into the live feed. Here it is to you. How beautiful all this, I told you. I can anticipate that uh, earlier in December we are waiting for a comet, hopefully becoming uh, decently bright to be visible with naked eye but we never know comets are uh, really crazy and uh, while you will hear about this comet for sure in um, a couple of weeks by now we plan of course to offer a live feed covering that comet too and this is why i suggest you if you want to join uh, our uh, facebook uh, page the virtual telescope project page on facebook just to be uh, informed in real time when we scheduled something and uh, something special is coming and something special is uh, organized by our network just to offer the opportunity to see something unusual we are particularly uh, skilled in uh, near earth uh, asteroids even those coming uh, very very close something uh, which made the fortune of the virtual telescope project still waiting for your new images new image from uh, James McHugh with the sky getting uh, easy zero Celsius degrees and I'm just putting the image online to share with you I have two versions of uh, this image I will share both the versions with you for your own enjoyment. In time, this is the natural site. And in the meantime, I want to prepare for the other image where James worked to, to capture some uh, subtle evidence of colors in the shadow in the darker region something we will see much better later but still but already starting to show sorry I was enjoying the picture myself because while I'm I'm clicking everywhere click uh, here and there <laughs> with my mouse here I, I I'm really enjoying uh, and these masterpieces we are receiving and sharing.
Here it is, my friends. This other image. While new ones are coming. Minute after minute. And so proud. I can, I had the privilege to share with you these uh, masterpieces because they are absolutely amazing. New capture from Bill, Ontario, Canada. Here it is. I appreciate this particular moment of the eclipse where uh, you are more or less 50% inside the Earth's shadow. This is uh, a first glance simulating uh, the idea of uh, a first quarter of the Moon, but the huge difference is that you have no shadows as in that original uh, Phase because this is a full moon. This is just uh, the effect of the air shadow, but the light conditions on the lunar disk are those of the full moon that is with the solar light just coming uh, straight to you. While uh, when you have the first quarter or the last quarter uh, on the border between the lunar day and the lunar night, you have, uh, you have uh, strong shadows making uh, details there very well visible something you don't you don't have this because here the dark side the dark uh, you have the lunar you have the sorry the lunar day but the black is not the lunar night the whole lunar night it is i would say an artificial night on the moon due to the earth shadow from the lunar point of view the lunar is experiencing a solar eclipse because of the earth How beautiful all these, how amazing for me every time. I really want to thank the 1000 viewers right now enjoying this uh, live feed and uh, I want to remind each of them that we are truly grateful to our imagers because I'm just I'm simply putting things together, just uh, uh, talking uh, to you, trying to explain what is happening. But the, the real work, the hardest part of this work is done by our astrophotographers, astro imagers. And uh, they are really doing something very beautiful, no matter the critical conditions many of them are facing, because I know that uh, Many of them are not at working now because they have cloudy skies, but even those working are still uh, fighting against the clouds or hazy sky, high humidity. And uh, this is the real hard life of astronomers, my friends. <clears throat> While we wait for new images, I still want to share with you this uh, simple graphic telling you why at some point you will see the legendary bronze red color on the lunar disk. The magic here is done by the Earth atmosphere. If the Earth had no atmosphere, we were not here, of course, but if we were, we... we Anyway, we were not having uh, the colored lunar eclipse. What is happening here? Why we, saw, we see those colors? When the moon, consider the total, lunar total eclipse, it just means that the, the lunar disk is uh, going entirely inside the Earth's shadow. It is just meaning that 
from the lunar point of view, you are not receiving any light from the sun because the Earth is completely covering the solar disk from the lunar point of view. And if you are not receiving any light from the sun, you should disappear, you should be black. But from the Earth, even a total eclipse is still visible, but not with the usual color of the moon, but with the bronze red color. Why? Because the atmosphere is just uh, separating colors, just uh, uh, mixed in the, in the typical uh, solar light, and only the red color is reaching the moon when the moon is inside the earth shadow. I find this as simple, as superb, as fantastic. And this simple graphic, very likely, is uh, making uh, possible to understand the beauty, the magic of the eclipse, I hope. <clears throat> Another image from uh, Karim Jaffer before the clouds, I told you. And uh, here it is. I appreciate this effort. And going to share with you this new image. from Kari Jaffer, Montreal Center, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Here it is. This uh, latest image. While we are still waiting, we are slowly approaching the I guess the maximum of the eclipse something uh, something will happen of course in 50 minutes by now <clears throat> I want to see if I can simulate the eclipse as well just to make easier for us to understand what is happening okay fine moon okay Let me check if I can share with you this view just to, to simulate what is happening now. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, just this uh, um, software provided by Software Bisc, one of our technological partners. By the way, I want to thank also our technological partners, Unitron Italia Instruments, Software Bisc, C-Web, Badr Planetarium, Santa Barbara Instruments Group, and uh, Plane Wave Instruments. And here you can see in uh, our uh, uh, local time, moment after moment, the position of the moon inside the air shadow and this can hopefully help understanding what is happening I can even remove features we really don't need <clears throat> meantime let's go and check for real images and we have, I'm 
very pleased to show you a new image from Adrian Bradley, USA. Going to share this with you. Very, very beautiful. The image is coming in a matter of seconds. Let's remove the simulator. And this is an image just arrived from USA. Adrian Bradley. And uh, meantime, I prepare to share a new one again from uh, Canada, from Bill Longo. Here it is. You can see image after image, as I told you, how the eclipse is slowly moving to the peak of the event. At some point, the shadow will uh, almost cover almost the entire lunar disk. How beautiful, precious, and amazing. I'm always amazed to look at these beautiful masterpieces. Checking and checking for new images. And we have from James McHugh, New Mexico, USA. Here it is, the new image. Just sharing this one. Wow, wow, it's amazing, my friends. I'm never, never tired to track, enjoy these events. And the lunar eclipses are absolutely amazing. Adrian Bradley has uh, kindly shared uh, a new version of uh, is uh, earlier image to have um, larger scale and I'm happy to share such a very nice image as well wow I I, 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 I hope that I I can bring to you the beauty of this idea. We are sitting uh, in different places of uh, the planet. I am in Rome, in broad daylight, no eclipse visible from here. And the images I'm sharing with you, the amazing images I'm sharing with you, are coming from uh, generous, amazing uh, people with great experience in astro imaging in, from different places, from uh, uh, the USA, from Canada in this particular case but we have people ready to image, but right now under the clouds, also in Australia, also in uh, Panama. And uh, while we are uh, waiting, while we are uh, hoping uh, to see the best of the eclipse, we have to be very grateful to these people because they are doing such an amazing work and their generosity is uh, making possible for us to receive this image in real time and I have the privilege to receive them and uh, share them with you in a few seconds. Everything you are enjoying here 
the beauty of these experiences belong to our friends. So it is just me perhaps failing, doing uh, uh, the best, but our friends are doing a superb job, really. And I have another image from uh, Ron Delvaux and I really want to adjust the image right away and share, of course, with you too. Almost done. Okay, just changing credits and seeing the image to have the image reaching everyone connected. <clears throat> Never tired, really. always amazed by the opportunity offered by technology of course technology is important here because without technology this could be simply impossible my friends but still here the heart of people involved the generosity of our astro imagers is the key factor My longtime friend Dean and uh, his son William Hooper from uh, Melbourne, Australia, are informed, have informed me that they are still open to see something, but they are now 100% clouded out at this moment. This happens, you know, and uh, Dean has been a great contributor to similar past events, and uh, from time to time. Everyone in this network <laughs> uh, uh, have a break, takes a break uh, just because of the clouds. As I say, this is uh, how modern nature works. And meantime, Sonali Deshmukh, Nebraska, has sent us uh, another very beautiful image, which I'm going to share in a second. Just saving the image, I receive it from Sonali. And uh, making it available right away. Different instruments, different uh, uh, orientations of the camera and different sensations, but putting all this together, I hope, my illusion is that these differences are making the live feed offered by the virtual telescope uh, lunar eclipse team uh, rewarding and different from uh, a more traditional uh, single instrument uh, device single instrument uh, based uh, event because here we have different people cooperating from uh, very different regions of the world and the human message here for me is uh, the most important one even more important than the eclipse itself this is my own idea, of course. And uh, I have been doing this many times and every time I feel uh, like the first one. <clears throat> and uh, here it is another image from Billongo, Canada. And that image in a few seconds is coming there and reaching you. Here it is. How oh, beautiful. Every image is. I apologize to repeat, but when uh, you are facing beauty, <laughs> there is a uh, nothing uh, to say more i mean it's beautiful it's amazing it's spectacular it's fantastic and we are 
slowly approaching the greatest eclipse and this will happen in about uh, 35 minutes and we've been running this for 90 minutes now and we have uh, many viewers from uh, all around on planet and I want to thank all of them for spending uh, their time with us for the opportunity to have us to have them with us looking up virtually but uh, thanks to the technology we are hopefully showing the eclipse to people otherwise going to miss it like me here in Italy uh, I, I cannot see the eclipse because we are in broad daylight and uh, I, 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 I would like to travel with a special uh, <laughs> science fiction machine to reach every place from where something special is, uh, is visible but here in Italy this time the eclipse is not visible at all and uh, no matter this I organized it with my friends with the team such uh, experience something we have been doing many times now over the years bringing to you eclipses lunar eclipses solar eclipses uh, meteor showers uh, comets really a lot of things and uh, it has been a fantastic uh, experience every time something unique in the world because the virtual telescope project thanks to this uh, fabulous team is uh, the only network providing uh, simultaneous images from very different regions of the world of uh, a given astronomical event uh, while saying this I have some images again from Ron Del Vaux sometimes images are taken uh, minutes earlier because uh, while of course the observers are doing uh, their best to share the images right away as soon as they are taken keep in mind that some of our friends are working with the mobile uh, connection and it will take longer of course to to send the images to to me but i still want to share those images it is not the chronological line here the master the master here is the beauty just going to share another shot another site as I eat from rendezvous taken uh, 10 minutes or so earlier and now our friend Sonali in Nebraska has uh, changed the scale of uh, the imaging device and I'm proud to share this new image with you too <clears throat> here it is just uh, a few more clicks with the mouse and now the image should be visible amazing my friends always amazed by this experience <clears throat> with the many people connected I mean I, I find this magic I apologize if from time to time I'm just uh, uh, adding some oh my god I, I'm stopping because I want to show you the first image clearly showing the magic of this eclipse this image is coming from uh, New Mexico it is uh, James McHugh making available this I will know I will tell uh, 
only this because one image is much better than 1000 words this is for you breathtaking really 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 this is amazing to me my friends wow I'm amazed, amazed by really the, the amazing experience, the capabilities, the, I mean, the know-how. I, I cannot tell you how lucky I feel to work together with this great team of people. I really believe this image is uh, showing the beauty of the eclipse and more to come. Here we have another amazing image from Bill Longo. I'm going to share this image right away. Wow. Let's save the image. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Amazing shots, amazing experience. Wow, wow, wow. We are truly lucky. And uh, I cannot tell the emotion I told you I've seen this many times but the beauty of the night nice sky the beauty of mother nature is this you ne you are never tired you can enjoy one million sunset you can enjoy uh, one million uh, starry nights and no matter the number the last one will be like the first one perhaps even better because your experience, your feelings are trained into the beauty of the experience. This is truly amazing. And I want to put back the earlier image by James showing the red color, the legendary red color we were looking forward to see it even with stars around of course <clears throat> how beautiful it is with this image and these colors we are just in the situation i showed it earlier i mean this one it is of course the earth atmosphere sending uh, the red component of the, of the solar light to the lunar disk when the lunar disk is inside the Earth shadow. This is uh, what is happening right now. Our simulator set for local uh, coordinates here in Italy, but of course the dynamic of the eclipse is uh, interesting no matter the detail just to tell you that we are approaching in 30 minutes more or less the peak of the eclipse my friends
back to the last the last image from uh, James and the first image we received showing those colors so well another shot is coming from Arizona rendezvous going to adjust as usual the scale to have the image fitting on our monitor and setting proper credits and sharing with you in a few seconds here we are my friends wow 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 I am also preparing to share a new image from Sonali, Nebraska here it is the saving and here you can see as well the red color of the darker portion of the lunar disk that is the lunar disk inside the air shadow that is the secret of that color as we explained it a number of times now <clears throat> how amazing how amazing my friends mother nature never fail never fails to amaze us with these amazing experiences And uh, while I am in, uh, it, it is fantastic because uh, I am just in my Italian morning, 9 uh, and 38 a.m. in the morning in Rome. And now my friend Susie Webb from Brisbane, Australia, is just telling me that she is ready to see the moon rising because, of course, our friends in Australia are preparing for the evening and uh, very likely we will have something good from Susie as well great image astrophotographer and uh, precious collaborator of our international projects and I want to share with you this image from Susie just uh, showing uh, her setup ready to go and uh, this is nice because not only the moon is interesting but I find it amazing also to see what our friends are doing just to feel closer to them and uh, it is amazing that we can try to spy them this way this is a setup prepared by Susie ready to go with the Eclipse meantime again I want to show again the red colors the image that uh, Ron, uh, James McHugh shared from his uh, location 
in New Mexico, USA. Fantastic sights, fantastic experience, to say the least. I'm always amazed every time we run these joint joint events by the quality and the generosity of the people involved. <clears throat> Amazing to see such a beautiful eclipse even if we live in the in the wrong region of the world from where the eclipse is not visible at all this is the magic of this project bringing the sky to everyone everywhere even when you cannot see that event personally Checking for new images coming. And I have a great image from uh, Billongo, Canada. Something I'm going to share right away with you. Here it is, my friends. amazing 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 and now you can really see why we love eclipses why we really wait for a new eclipse to show and share because of the beautiful colors this uh, slow but constant dramatic evolution even the eclipse evolves so slow the lunar eclipse is so slow in its evolution the changes are dramatic as you can see here So beautiful, so breathtaking, breathtaking. Wow, just uh, keeping an eye. I also have a nice image from uh, Sonali, Nebraska, USA. I'm going to share her image as well. Wow, so happy and grateful to our astrophotographers for this opportunity and the precious experience we are living all together. This event is really going across borders and uh, we are observing something uh, special thanks to the generosity of people living uh, in the US in uh, Australia in Central America, in Canada, and it is their generosity, their kindness to make their work, their images available that is making possible the experience we are hopefully enjoying all together, my friends. How beautiful, how proud I am to call these generous people friends and share this uh, fantastic experience with, with you. I received another very interesting image taken uh, perhaps 15 minutes ago 
but I still want to share because uh, while we are now well inside the flavor of the red colors of the moon I still want to share this uh, image taken uh, earlier by Rondelbo from Arizona saving it for you <clears throat> here it is but meantime I'm setting back this other image, the last one I received with the beautiful uh, red colors in the dark region of the, so the lunar disk here it is my friends amazing, amazing, amazing I, I told you this many times, but I re I'm really never tired, never tired to enjoy events like this. Cannot tell you how, I, how happy I am to have this opportunity. always checking for new images I want to underline that our friends taking these beautiful images are often working under less than ideal conditions because while we see very beautiful images they are still fighting uh, uh, edgy skies fog humidity clouds and uh, this is uh, something we need to keep in mind to appreciate even more the precious images we are receiving here another amazing amazing and awesome image from uh, James McHugh New Mexico these uh, joint efforts are uh, for me a precious opportunity to honor what I love more in astronomy, that is the opportunity to meet new friends. The human factor is for me even more important than the scientific side. And uh, as an astrophysic, a professional astrophysicist, I really want to underline this human factor to be for me the most important. And uh, some of the friends working uh, today with us are really long time friends. And uh, for me it's a joy and uh, a privilege to work together and I will never thank them enough for what they are doing and while I really want to underline this I'm ready to share with you the latest image just arrived from uh, New Mexico thanks to James McHugh here it is how can we stay away from this beauty we should connect with the nature, with the nice sky in particular, if I can tell this, we should connect with nature and the nice sky more, more often than usual. We are approaching uh, the first two hours here of our live coverage and these images hopefully will pay you back for the time you spent with us we have uh, 1400 viewers connected in this very moment i'm very proud that this project the virtual telescope project started in 2006 made possible over this uh, long time 
to many people, millions of people around the planet to enjoy what is happening in our nice sky. And uh, all this also possible has been possible thanks to the generous people we are working uh, today for this event. Something not visible from uh, Italy, where our main instruments are installed. The Virtual Telescope Project is, ba is uh, based on Italy as for its telescopes, but this event was not visible from Italy. And as we have done uh, dozens of times, we joined, we, we, we asked, we worked together with our international uh, team, magic team, cosmic team, to bring all this together. And here it is a new image arrived right now from Canada, Bilongo. I really, I'm amazed to see each image because it is a very nice shock every, every time. But I also want to thank our friends not working, not imaging now. I have num a number of people, very good friends, just uh, uh, ready to go, but the clouds were uh, ready to go as well. So they are not sending images, but I want to thank them because they were ready as they had done in the past. And really again, I want to thank everyone. Those taking images, making uh, the event uh, possible after all, but also those ready to go, but uh, this time having clouds in their sky. How beautiful it is to look at the wonders so of the nice sky, the perfection of these images. Fantastic. Sometimes I apologize, but I prefer to shut up <laughs> because uh, there is uh, nothing to say when you are enjoying mother nature the beauty of the nice sky the regal show of the lunar eclipse so beautiful so precious <clears throat> Let's check also the simulator telling us something. Here it is. And uh, this is, as I told you, a partial lunar eclipse. 97% is the fraction of the lunar disk going entirely inside the Earth's shadow. So this is uh, basically an eclipse marking the border between uh, a much obvious partial eclipse and a total eclipse. And in fact, you can see that we are enjoying the typical uh, red colors of the totality because a large fraction of the lunar disk is uh, under the right conditions to show the precious color I mentioned earlier. <coughs> Back now to live images to the latest masterpiece I received from Villongo, Ontario, Canada. And now I also have uh, Julie Strayer jumping uh, in our live feed from uh, Australia. I told you there the moon was just rising. They are at the beginning of the night while uh, our friends in, in the America are in the middle of their night. While here in Italy, we are in broad daylight. I I'm sorry, but our planet 
is a globe, <laughs> not flat. And uh, this is the first image from Julie. Now that the moon is rising, also for our friends in uh, Australia. And just sharing the image with you in a few seconds. Here it is, my friends. This image is coming from Julie Story, Queensland, Australia. I have been in Australia ages ago. Oh my God, 1995. <laughs> and I visited the beautiful uh, Queensland as well. Amazing, amazing views. Amazing experience. And you can see here in this image that Julie took at the beginning of uh, the visibility window of, uh, of the eclipse from uh, Australia. You can have evidence of the red uh, a hint, a hint of the red presence, red color in the shadow, of course. looking, enjoying, waiting and loving the experience of the night nice sky even if technology is involved nothing can be compared, trust me, with your personal experience under the stars and if, if you are in the right place of the planet from where you can access the eclipse personally shoot off your computer, shoot down your computer say goodbye to the virtual telescope project and go out and enjoy yourself otherwise if you are clouded out if you are like me in the wrong region of the world or for other reasons you cannot go outside you are very welcome I, i'm joking but just i want to underline that the, the personal live real experience under the sky is something unique something you can never never trade with uh, something uh, another another experience of course <coughs> having a lot of fun all together and really enjoying the precious experience of the nice sky I'm never tired to organize something new and uh, to, to really to experience the joy of uh, such a cooperation with uh, our friends and bring the astronomical event of the moment, the eclipse this time, to you. We will try, I mean, I will schedule and will announce details soon also for the upcoming uh, Comet Leonard hoping the comet will be naked eye visible early next December and uh, we will have other uh, things scheduled for December also the Gemini meteor, meteors and uh, this will be announced soon I strongly suggest you to join the virtual telescope uh, project page on uh, Facebook just to keep an eye on our activity and to be promptly notified when something new is coming. <clears throat> Up and running, looking and waiting for more images. 
meantime I really I want to go back to the to the image I received from Bill where the colors of the the shadow are in perfect balance the fraction of the moon still in blue the light amazing 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 in principle in uh, a few minutes a couple of minutes we should reach the greatest eclipse that is the maximum coverage of the lunar disk by the earth shadow and we are particularly curious to see new images coming even if what we have what we had so far is out of this world it's absolutely outstanding should should we even close for any reason the life in now i would feel extremely satisfied and happy because we had the unique experience to see the eclipse and here it is an image a new image from uh, our friend sonali in nebraska omaha nebraska adjusting uh, the image right away and uh, here it is adjusting again okay we are sorry we should let the image now online here it is very nice very very beautiful I'm receiving messages from uh, friends ready to go but uh, clouded out like uh, Christoph Day, long time friend and collaborator of this uh, international joint efforts and uh, but I want to thank Chris and all the other friends clouded out because it is uh, uh, for me it is uh, their kindness their generosity no matter the weather uh, to make great this experience and uh, so thank you to both those uh, making images and uh, also to those not working this time because of the clouds and uh, it is funny that at least our live feed is bringing the eclipse to our uh, collaborators uh, under the clouds <laughs> and uh, I'm never tired you know and even Bill from Canada informed me right now that uh, clouds are now an issue in the sky as well even if some moonlight is still uh, surviving and in fact here it is the latest capture from Billongo, Canada I'm truly, truly amazed and sometimes it is very hard to keep talking uh, in a language which is not my native language, of course my, my tongue is Italian and my English is very far from being perfect and uh, uh, keeping uh, focused on uh, the English is not easy when you are really having this amazing, truly stunning experience and uh, here it is another image from uh, Julie Queensland Australia something I'm really going to adjust right away and share with you 
I'm always very amazed by the different techniques, different instruments used by our friends, our precious and generous friends to take their own images. All of them are extremely experienced observers. And uh, in this very moment, we are just in the center of the eclipse, as I told you. And uh, from now, the, the eclipse will uh, slowly move to the second part of the show and the lunar disk will slowly exit and leave the Earth shadow. I want to go back for a while to our simulator just to tell you, uh, just to show this a bit better. Okay. Still checking, still uh, hoping uh, for clear skies so that our friends can share their precious sites with us. Back to the latest image. And now back to show you some very recent images just to keep the interest and the beauty alive. Here it is. Never tired, always amazed by the beauty of the night sky. I'm amazed because uh, while the eclipse is a, is a basic event because mm -hmm. uh, for some reason people believe that uh, something uh, to be special uh, really needs uh, very uh, specific, very strange instruments to be seen. But very often the easier the approach, the most preach the experience eclipses are among the most beautiful natural events ever. This is why they really captured the imagination, the interest uh, of our ancestors since the very beginning of our experience on this uh, precious and unique planet we call home Earth. And uh, this is why I always underline that if you have a chance, you have to go out there. If you are under the right sky, if you have the eclipse up and running, in your place go out and enjoy the eclipse in your sky personally why the technology is very useful to bring the experience when something is happening far from your uh, area and uh, in that case it is the only opportunity you have to uh, join the call me show if that opportunity if you are lucky enough to have the eclipse showing right now out from your balcony go there and enjoy because the experience the feeling the emotion are absolutely huge in that case oh my god i received a wonderful image by james and this image will make everyone happy like the ones we have uh, shared so far, but the peculiar choice here, something I was hoping to see, but had no, <laughs> had no the courage to ask, is this, my friends. James captured the moon 
its uh, amazing colors, as well with the very famous cluster of Pleiades. Look at this image. On the upper left, of course, we have the moon with its, its precious uh, red color. And in the upper right, you have the impression to see a little deeper, but it is not the little deeper, the big deeper. They are the Pleiades, a real star cluster in Taurus. And the moon is, uh, in, you know, in, uh, from a perspective point of view, in that direction, it is in the Taurus constellation. And the Pleiades uh, are a few degrees apart. And this is an absolute, absolutely beautiful image. Thank you so much, so much, James, for sharing this for taking the time to change your setup because of course to image both the moon and the Pleiades you need a larger uh, field of view very likely a photo lens not a telescope otherwise you will concentrate on the moon disk they are uh, uh, th these images are completing each other because it is nice to see the tailed image of the lunar disk in eclipse but it is also nice to have a larger view to see what is around in the sky. Because when you are in the, in the, at the maximum of the eclipse, like in this case, an almost total eclipse, uh, the, the sky is now dark enough so that even around the moon, you can see stars otherwise completely lost because of the lunar or the full moon glare. I also want to thank my friend John Stevenson, longtime friend and uh, collaborator of these uh, uh, joint efforts. Uh, I know the weather there in New South Wales is uh, bad. Thanks for, for uh, letting us know, John. But again, thank you so much for your kindness, for being ready and available to bring this to the world. Uh, weather is always a factor, we know, but uh, uh, gratitude and joy to work to think and uh, arrange things to bring these things to the people are absolutely amazing no matter the weather so thank you so much john i have here another image from uh, bill canada now that uh, clouds moved uh, a bit away Here we are. And uh, wow, amazing to say the least, my friends. We are truly, truly lucky. I also have another image from uh, Sonali going to put the image online ready to, to go live here it is I'm trying to do my best to give the right credits to everyone because they deserve all the merits of this live feed our friends taking images and our friends ready to take images but under clouds new image as well from Julie Strayer going to adjust her image too And uh, here it is, just adjusting credits, of course. Mm -hmm. 
and here it is uh, the latest image we had from Julie, Queensland, Australia. Very, very beautiful. Never tired, never, never tired, my friends. Amazed by the beauty, the perfection of the eclipse we are enjoying this way, thanks to our amazing, generous astrophotographers. I want to share again the image we had from uh, James with the the eclipse at moon and the Pleiades as well. A real opportunity to see beauty in beauty. The eclipse at moon on the left or the bottom left and on the upper right the stars, the star cluster of Pleiades in Taurus. Just to give you an idea of the sky, of the situation. Here it is uh, the simulator. Let me see if I can just try to recreate what uh, Okay. James has imaged. Now I ask the simulator here, my friends, to show the moon and the Pleiades on the on the right, so that you can hopefully appreciate. Let me see. Okay, I apologize for this uh, strange combination, but. I, I made the, the simulator visible together with the image by James just, just to show you what we are seeing and how beautiful, how precious these images are all the time. But after showing for a while the simulator I don't want to show it anymore as the image by itself is by far the most precious things to see. Amazing, really, really amazing. I'm never tired, especially when you have these special gifts and we are still here waiting for more but as I told you, we had uh, such uh, beautiful images that uh, we are happy the same and proud to work together with these great people making uh, these images available As I told you, we are now leaving the eclipse. I mean, we had uh, the peak of the eclipse uh, almost 20 minutes ago, soon after uh, 10 local time to be seven, 17 minutes ago. So slowly we are leaving and uh, the moon will slowly leave the earth shadow and things will come back to normality. Still up and running, still waiting. 
let's have also another image I already shared this image with you but uh, while waiting it is still a joy to see with a lunar disk a larger scale while we are of course waiting for more and I want to share a composite of early stages by Dom Murray, member of uh, the Royal Astronomical Society Canada. I received this image via Karim and I want to also to share this with you. Here it is the earlier phases I repeat I give the credits by voice Dom Murray Royal Astronomical Society of Canada member and I, I thank Karim Jaffer for sharing uh, this image friends <laughs> it's a privilege for me to be here and uh, share these uh, masterpieces really want to come to go back to the latest image from James again a nice beautiful sight while waiting for more and more while we are now slowly leaving the core of the eclipse we are now 20 minutes after the greatest eclipse the peak of the event now checking for more and we have a new image again from our friend Sonali Omaha Nebraska and here it is uh, her latest image just adjusting as usual here it is and the new image is coming right away here it is wow very different instruments are used to capture these images telescopes with advanced cameras smartphones attached to the telescope photographic equipment like uh, tele, tele lens and the camera and no matter the instrument the experience the vision the images are amazing <clears throat>
we have uh, many viewers and I want to thank all of them for being with us for this special event. Waiting for more every time I check the my mailbox. I'm always uh, waiting, always hoping to see something to thank our friends, of course, for their work making possible all this. How beautiful. The privilege for me to be here is huge to present these masterpieces and hopefully preserving their unique beauty. This is the best I can do. Let's have a look at the simulator. Making clear we are slowly leaving. And we are happy with what we have seen so far. And still I want to thank everyone. I want to mention everyone again. And uh, the international team to cover live uh, this eclipse is quite uh, huge. Dean and William Hooper, Australia. John Stevenson, Australia. James McHugh, USA, Geoffrey Wyatt, Australia, Julie Stroyer, Australia, Joachim Fabrica Polleri, Panama, Gary Varney, USA, Chris Carvin, Canada, Jim Thompson, Canada, Adrian Bradley, USA, Bill Longo, Canada, Karim Jaffer, Canada, Christoph Dale, Australia, Susie Webb, Australia, Sonali Deshmuk, USA, and Ron Delvaux, USA. And who are speaking to you is Gianluca Masi, Virtual Telescope Project, Italy. Let's check for more images now that clouds are affecting uh, almost uh, every imager. I have received uh, some updates, even our friends imaging so far are now having uh, a few troubles because of uh, the weather, the clouds, but hopefully this is uh, just a temporary issue, you know. Wow, amazing. Again, I want to, to share a few images taken earlier. Particularly this one from James. I, I like this image because uh, putting together the lunar eclipse and the Pleiades, this image is just reminding us about the beauty of the sky. When you are looking for something, when you are enjoying something, keep an eye on the surrounding because uh, there are always surprises waiting for you. This is something I always learn when I work with my own telescopes. For example, if I am tracking an asteroid, and I have to point the telescope there to see that asteroid, which is there for one hour, for one minute. Well, if I point the telescope there, 
I see, wow, there is a special galaxy there. A galaxy I was going to completely miss otherwise. Without the asteroid uh, uh, forcing me to point there, very likely I was going to miss for my lifetime that galaxy. And uh, it is always something you can discover when you look up in the night sky. And uh, while uh, our friend Bill is waiting for the moon to show, because right now from his location in Canada, the moon is covered by the clouds, we received uh, this night gift, completely different flavor. This is the Orion Nebula. Look, my friends, a nice, uh, a nice, uh, uh, interlude here while waiting for clouds to leave Bill Sky and just to give you an idea about the rich sky we have up there just to give uh, just to show you an image from Bill with the eclipse, the last one we received from him. I'm just showing this image back, taken close to the peak of the eclipse, more or less 30 minutes ago. Wow, absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> Waiting, hoping, these two things are uh, common friends among those uh, working under the night sky. The lessons is that you have to wait, you have to hope, wait for the event to show, hope for clear skies. And uh, Murphy is always in action. When you have been waiting for something special for years, be sure that that night, that day, <laughs> something worse with the weather will happen. I think that our everyone here, me or my friends here, could write a book about this topic. Really. But this is making uh, perhaps the experience of the sky even more exciting because nothing is obvious. Let's share the simulator again. Here it is, as you can see, the lunar disk is moving uh, to the upper left. <coughs> right now we are uh, clouded out almost everywhere. I mean, in the observing on the observing sites involved in this live feed we have mainly clouds now we have been lucky so far in italy weather here in central italy at least has been uh, impossible for astronomy for the last two weeks now it is uh, very clear but of course we cannot see the eclipse because the eclipse is not showing in the italian sky Still waiting, still hoping, finger crossed, asking everyone to keep her or his finger crossed to see more after a two hours and a half of light coverage so far. 
We are still up and running, still waiting, still ready to share images as soon as they arrive from our amazing imagers. Now back to real image. Here it is a new image from New Mexico, James McHugh. Going to share this one immediately. Here it is, my friends. Another amazing shot. The quality of the images we have seen tonight or today, this morning, depending from you, have been amazing. And this is the last image we have. It is from New Mexico by James McHugh. And it's a super image once again. How beautiful the experience is for, for me to share and bring to you perfect images like this. This is poetry. For me, this is poetry. A new image, the last one. And uh, of course, we are slowly leaving the eclipse, but we are still uh, getting and receiving uh, amazing images because uh, there is uh, some kind of symmetry between the early phase, the start of the eclipse to the peak, and now the ending phase from the peak to the natural end of the eclipse itself. We are still up and running, of course, and uh, we are ready, we are happy that uh, somewhere the sky improved a bit, at least for one second to grab a new image like the one we just received and shared from uh, James and we are still waiting we are still hoping to see more but mother nature has the last word on this you know and we fully respect this again I want to show you why eclipse happens it is just a question of uh, orbit. I told you, it just happens we live on a planet orbiting the sun and we are not alone. There is a satellite, the moon, around the Earth on its own orbit. But the plane hosting the Earth orbit and the plane hosting the lunar orbit are not, uh, are not on the same plane. I mean, th there is a, a tilt between, uh, uh, there is an inclination the orbit of the moon is uh, tilted of uh, 5.2 degrees respect to the plane hosting the Earth orbit. This is why you don't have an eclipse every full moon, lunar eclipse or new moon, solar eclipse. The eclipse just happens when the new moon or the full moon, let's say full moon for lunar eclipse like in this case, happens with the moon on the Earth orbit plane because in that conditions you have a perfect line between the sun the earth sending shedding uh, its shadow and the and the moon just uh, moving into the earth shadow only when the moon the full moon for lunar eclipses is on the earth orbit plane you have the eclipse and uh, this happens when the full moon happens in the intersection between the lunar orbit and the earth orbit the so-called nodes and this graphic should make all this quite clear to understand. We now have a new image from uh, Canada, from Bill, and I'm going to share his image right away. Here we are, just saving the image. Okay, it's time for us to show the image again. Here it is for you. Amazing shot. 
and I am also a new image from Australia it's amazing how we can jump in a few seconds from Canada in this case with Bill to Australia in this case with Julie and I'm just preparing uh, Julie image here we are amazed by this show every every time image from Julia as well amazing 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 we are slowly approaching ending actually our third hour of live coverage so i am proud that everything went so far so smoothly <clears throat> amazing to see every every new image my friends wow we will stay live uh, for some time more now as we are really happy to see so many people connected and just curious about the eclipse <clears throat> but we are of course waiting for more and new images waiting and waiting and uh, and hoping in clear skies I am amazed by the red color you know this is an effect of our atmosphere just uh, sending to the lunar disk in our shadow the right component of the solar light this is a I mean a miracle I would say uh, an effect a special effect due natural special effect due to our atmosphere the beauty of our atmosphere not only is our atmosphere is precious for thousands of reasons because it is protecting us from uh, 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 dangerous radiations from the sun from uh, uh, elements of the outer space because it is uh, making possible for us to breathe the right uh, mixture uh, of oxygen and so on but it is also special because it the atmosphere adds such a beauty to everything we see up there also when astronomy is involved because the red color we see on the lunar portion inside the air shadow is due to our our atmosphere just uh, separating uh, each color like in a rainbow uh, as part of a solar ray and it is just the red component is uh, reaching the center of the air shadow this is why you see that color when the lunar disk is inside the earth shadow <clears throat> and now we have another image very beautiful image i want to share with you these images from adrian bradley as i they are still showing a combination of the lunar eclipse with this the stars all around in a large field of view image adjusting and setting uh, right credits
amazing I'm, i i think you really love you will love this image as well checking that i'm adjusting everything right and here we are with the image showing in a few seconds showing the eclipsed moon and many stars with the, the pleiades we saw earlier but here it is another another amazing sight and i also want to show you another image always from adrian just preparing it while you enjoy the one I already shared and again here a very large field of view image also showing Orion constellation now that during the eclipse the full moonlight is uh, largely reduced you can have very funny very nice experience enjoying many stars with the full moon just because for a while its light is uh, strongly reduced by the air shadow I also have uh, Karim Jaffer sharing uh, an image from uh, his student Vanessa Tommasini and uh, I want to to share this image too image coming in a few seconds adjusting the best I can here it is okay image coming my friends this image I received this email by Karim Jaffer, but it is uh, from uh, his student Vanessa Tomasini. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Here it is another image by Bill. It is clear that we are moving, slowly moving. Uh, to the end of the eclipse here it is the latest image from Bill but I also had an image uh, I want to show you from Adrian who shared those uh, very nice large field of view images with the moon and the stars and constellation, the Pleiades, Orion and Taurus around. But I have also an image uh, from uh, Adrian showing uh, the lunar disk likely at the maximum of the eclipse itself. Here it is, my friends. Meantime, I also have a new capture from Julie in Australia. Something I'm going to prepare and share right away. And 
uh, here it is uh, the latest image I had from Julie in Queensland, Australia. Extremely, extremely beautiful. And uh, Billongo from Canada has sent uh, his uh, last image because now from his uh, observing site the moon is now below the roof line and uh, it has been uh, a huge pleasure and privilege Bill to share your images with uh, our uh, huge audience so thank you very much Bill we will stay in touch of course but again thank you so much for contributing so preciously to this live feed and your contribution to make the experience possible for such a huge community around the planet thank you very much bill and i'm just going to share the last image from bill and uh, I plan to stay live for uh, some more time very nice very beautiful and precious everything we saw thanks to the generosity of uh, our many many friends all around the planet in particular for this uh, lunar eclipse we had contributions from uh, Canada from USA and Australia but our team included also friends in uh, in, uh, in Panama but uh, uh, weather has been an issue in uh, several places but I still want to thank everyone ready to go because the weather is something which it is far from our control so thank you to everyone for generosity and for being ready to go with this experience and for making possible to share with our friends We had so many images, such a very beautiful images. I also have an image I want to share from Susie, taken uh, one hour ago, which for uh, that this image for some delay on the mail server are just arrived, but the beauty is always is immortal it is not depend it is not depending uh, on that factor and look here also with the Pleiades it is interesting to see the different orientation because the uh, images we saw from uh, James Adrian are from the northern hemisphere while uh, this image from Suzy is coming from the southern hemisphere, the North America versus Australia. Look here, how beautiful it is. This image taken uh, 
from Susie. Very beautiful image. <clears throat> Here it is. Uh, wow, a stunning image from Rondelvo. He worked a bit on uh, an image he captured uh, on the peak of the eclipse to provide us with this uh, amazing, amazing shot, my friends. Just adjusting credits and sharing with you this uh, the latest image I received from uh, Rendezvous, Arizona, USA referring to the, to the peak of the eclipse almost one hour ago but my friends thanks Ron for working on the image to offer the best view possible very nice very precious very very beautiful <coughs> sorry we are still up and running Really, it is hard sometimes to comment these amazing images because, like a universal language, the beauty of uh, Mother Nature, the beauty of uh, the lunar eclipse, really, it is speaking by itself. I really don't need to add anything, I believe. This is why very often I stay quiet, provided I told about the eclipse, telling what is going on, but now beauty is speaking and the humans should just be quiet, I believe. At least this is my personal idea. We are now touching the end of the third hour of our uh, live coverage. And I want to check also the simulator. Clearly showing uh, that we are now well in the direction of the end. I will share more images as soon as they will arrive another image I have from Susie And uh, I, I am receiving now some very beautiful images from uh, Susie Webb that form for, for some uh, server issue were missing earlier, but it's a joy for me to promptly share as they, uh, they've been taken around the peak of the eclipse. And they also show stars and sometimes even uh, airplanes like in this case very nice so many different sides experience <clears throat> wow And 
and uh, a few more images by Susie. You can see here a knife craft on the top of the moon and on the bottom of the image you see the Pleiades. Wow, this is an, another very beautiful image because, again from Susie, because it includes natural elements from the earth and I love this kind of pictures, you know. Many images I grab around uh, consider both the nice sky and the uh, elements from our own planet. Very nice shot, Susie. Thank you so much. And I also want to share again from Susie. Arrived with some delay because of server issue, but I told you this really doesn't matter because the beauty has not a deadline. Here it is, another beautiful image around the peak. And I have now also a final image from New Mexico, my old time good friend James McHugh. Optic, optics fogging, below freezing and clouds. And this is the last image we have from James in New Mexico. And I'm very happy to share this uh, his final uh, site with everyone here. And uh, with this actually we are ready to go and uh, close uh, this live feed which has been uh, extremely exciting uh, for me to run and share so i will really wish to thank everyone involved in this i apologize my friends just let me share with you the latest image just to be sure You, are, you can see it. I understand that for some reason the images I, I, I had from Suzy did not show because I had simulator, but uh, I really want to share all of them again. I have them ready here, so I really want to put the images from Susie back because they are very, very nice. And this one, which I'm going to share in this very moment. I mean, all these images were taken around the peak of the eclipse, but for some reasons, the server delivered the images minutes ago. But as I told you, beauty, does not expire, is always uh, alive. And look, there is a nightcraft, an airplane just uh, above the moon, while Pleiades, the star cluster, is on the bottom. And uh, another beautiful image, very precious, I had from Susie is this. As I told you, this one, I love it because it is also showing elements from uh, our own planet, planet Earth with the lunar eclipsed uh, disk and trees telling we are on the planet we call Earth. Very nice, 
very precious, very, very beautiful once again, my friends. <clears throat> and the last image from Susie, concentrating on uh, the total or the lunar disk, sorry, is this. And I hope that you will appreciate this wonderful shot again. Sorry for the little issue with the, the simulator lasting uh, too much. And uh, I'm going to close this live feed sharing uh, the last image I received from uh, Julie, Julie Stroyer in Queensland, Australia. Here it is. And that said, I really want to thank everyone who really worked hard for sharing uh, images with the world and bringing the experience of the clips, in particular where it was not visible, like Italy, for example. While I address the final greetings, I want to show back the beautiful image I received from uh, Susie Webb, Brisbane, Australia. And I told you, I want to thank everyone who joined this live feed, just uh, being part of uh, this uh, Partial Lunar Eclipse International team, because they were the true heroes here. They are Dean and William Hooper, Australia, John Stevenson, Australia, James McHugh, USA, Geoffrey Wyatt, Australia, Julie Strayer, Australia, Joachim Fabri Capolleri, Panama, Gary Varney, USA, Chris Carvin, Canada, Jim Thompson, Canada, Adrian Bradley, USA, Bill Longo, Canada, Karim Jaffer, Canada, Christoph Dale, Arizona, Susie Webb, Australia, sorry, Christoph Dale, Australia, Susie Webb, Australia, Sonali Deshmukh, USA, Rondelbo, USA, and Gianluca Masi is speaking. And uh, they have been in very important. They are really the reason why this live feed was possible. Part of them was uh, uh, clouded out. So we just had images from uh, some of the team members, but I want to thank everyone to be ready and generous, so generous to be ready to share their images with the world. And uh, it has been a privilege for me to sit here in Rome in broad daylight and uh, uh, just uh, sharing these uh, perfect images, these uh, very, very beautiful uh, masterpieces and uh, bringing to you the beauty of the eclipse. I hope you had fun and I want to thank for offering your precious time to us joining our live feed and looking up ideally to the eclipse no matter if the eclipse was uh, really visible from your location or not. The Virtual Telescope project is already uh, working on the next show. Uh, we will bring early in December, the upcoming Comet Leonard. Hopefully uh, for uh, a few days, it should be bright enough to be visible by naked eye, but we will discover uh, later as uh, comets are always doing uh, crazy things and they really don't know predictions, you know. Anyway, we are ready to share this comet live. We plan to share also the Gemini Meteor Shower in uh, around uh, half of December. Anyway, for details, be ready to check later, uh, early, earlier next week, our website www.virtualtelescope.au. Perhaps um, another nice opportunity uh, to, to stay up to date with us is to join our Facebook page, the Virtual Telescope Project page on Facebook, and there we publish everything going to happen via our network. I also want to thank our technological partners, Unitron Italia Instruments, Software BISC, C-Web, Bader Planetarium, Santa Barbara Instruments Group and PlaneWeb Instruments. Again, I want to thank the international team who made possible for us 
to receive in real time from different regions of the planet these beautiful images, the ones we have shared and you have seen enjoying the eclipse. And I want to thank all of you, part of our audience, for giving us your time, for your interest, your trust in our project. And again, I wish to everyone the best. Keep looking in the sky. Keep looking up. Thank you so much and see you next time, hopefully soon, across the stars.